Eric, and I'm the author of Life After Losses, and here are five things I wish someone had told me before becoming an author and a coach. Number one, there is an audience. Look, I wrote a book about being widowed twice and finding my way through the grief to live a more fulfilling life. And on the surface, it sounds like a downer of a book. It's part memoir, part self-help, and I kept getting asked, who is your audience? Was I, who was I trying to reach? Was I trying to reach widows and widowers? Was I trying to reach men or women? Was I trying to reach gay or straight? And the more I thought about it, the crazier I became because I thought about the book and the message and the broader the audience became. I have heard from so many different types of people and I'm really glad that I didn't narrow down the audience so much because I've heard that fantastic feedback. And while it's important for you to know who your audience is, be too narrow, might limit to whom and to what you're exposed. Number two, be authentically yourself. We all know this on some level, and we're all usually pretty authentic with our friends and families. But throughout my career in financial services and then consulting, I felt there was a need to be a brand and to present that brand to the outside world. Uh, and you know, and, and after writing such an extremely personal book, I discovered that my brand was actually being authentically me. And others are naturally attracted to authentic and real people. Your mother was right. People will like you for who you are. Number three, have faith. Whether you find faith in others or faith in a higher power or just faith that the sun is going to rise and set each day, we all need something to believe in. When I first started writing, I wasn't sure if I would be able to help anyone, but I believed I could. And believing in what's possible, that something is possible, is half the battle. You gotta get past those limiting beliefs that you put up around yourself, and you have got to stop listening to those limiting beliefs from those people that are surrounding you. As with grieving, your life's journey is yours. You choose the direction. Number four, keep the content fresh. The book was a great first step, and in the immortal words of Ned Ryerson from Groundhog Day, whoo, 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 it was a doozy. But the book was really a one-time thing. To keep the audience engaged, I have to think of ways and content that adds value to that engagement. So I've added a blog to supplement the book's messages. I'm adding coaching to, uh, to work with people for those opportunities. And to maintain relevance, you've got to continually look at your content and have content that engages and reevaluate whether or not it's still helpful. Number five, block and guard your time. I've known this from the corporate world for years, but was only moderately successful in being able to do so, usually because of things outside of my control, like managers wanting my time. Now that I'm transitioning into a more creative activities, I find the need is becoming far more critical for me to save time on my calendar so that I can write, so I can run my business, so I can focus on my well-being mentally and physically. And I could instead use a little more focus on the physical. But someone wants some time on my calendar and it's already been booked, I've got no problem nowadays saying, I am booked at that time, however I have Tuesday at three in the afternoon open, how's that? It's important that you prioritize your schedule for what you need to get done for yourself. Once again, I'm James Levesque, author of Life After Losses, and those were five things I wish someone told me before becoming an author and a coach. I hope you find peace.